Hi, and welcome to The Leslie Show. Woo! We're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to be talking about truffles. But before we get into that, I want to share you some really good information my mother told me. She told me Toots. Toots is my middle name, in case you, you guys don't know that. Anyway, she said, when your little kids start to grow, make sure you set up bank accounts for them because these little kids are going to grow up to be big kids and one day you're going to need that money. And thank you, Ma, because I did need bail money from my youngest son just the other week. So thanks, Ma. I thought I'd share that with you guys. Anyway, moving right along, we have Lisa Bedrogi with us today. She's with Cuvée Connections and she's a land use planner. So let's give a nice welcome to Lisa Bedrogi. Lisa, welcome to The Leslie Show. It's so good to have you here today. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. So here, we're here to talk about truffles. No, we're not here to talk about chocolate truffles. We're here to talk about a unique type of truffle. So Lisa, tell us about truffles and where do truffles come from? Well, truffles of the mushroom variety is what we're talking about today. And a lot of people don't really know what mushrooms or truffles are. Um, they're not the chocolate one, as you say, but they are a fungus. And they actually grow underground, whereas mushrooms grow above ground. The fungus that grow the truffles grow on the rootstocks of certain host trees. Oh my goodness. I would imagine that might be a little difficult to grow. You're saying that it grows on trees, or what, what type of trees does it grow on? Or Well, mm. it's interesting because they grow naturally in other parts of the world. They originated in France and Italy in the Pyrenees regions. And uh, they've been establishing the way to grow them commercially throughout the world, internationally in Spain and Morocco and New Zealand. And they're just starting to make their way to California and the West Coast. But basically, you're correct in that they need a special kind of tree. There are only certain types of host trees that will grow the fungus. And the fungus itself is a, uh, a weak competitor. So the trick in growing truffles is to establish that fungal growth tuber mellisporum, to be exact, which grows the black truffle, on the roots, and outcompete any other fungus that could come in, which is a normal activity in the root system. You've got to look at it as an ecosystem, a microbiology that happens on any trees. The fungus is actually a good thing for the tree because it feeds the tree nutrients, and likewise, the tree feeds the fungus nutrients. So it's a symbiotic relationship. Okay, well, what, what type of trees grow the truffles? Well, mostly oak trees. There are some uh, nut trees. Hazelnuts are another variety that will grow trees, or excuse me, grow truffles. But um, they have to be a certain type of ectomycorrhizal uh, breeding uh, root tree. There are certain trees that, again, will actually retract the kind of fungus that we're trying to grow. And so that's the very tricky part, is to establish that underground system that's conducive for growing truffles versus other types of fungus. Okay, well I'm imagining there's probably different types of truffles as far as the way they taste. Um, or... The distinct characteristic of truffles is, is really, it, it's um, very distinctive. In fact, I have a sample for you to try and some cheese. Oh, good. Um, there are mm. different types of truffles, and if you're a very educated truffle connoisseur, you probably can tell the difference. Um, but in terms of having a large variety of different flavors, there's really one distinct characteristic in the aroma and in the flavor that's conducive of a truffle. And how would you describe that? Well, let's go ahead and take a sample. Okay. Now this I have here is a truffle infused cheese. It's a cheddar cheese. So you do want to try to get oh, out of that, um, the truffle itself within the cheese. Mmm. Mmm. I love it. Great. It's very, very good. It's very mm. distinguishing. Do you feel that sort of a, a silkiness to the cheese? Um, an aroma, mm. you can smell it actually, and mm. very pungent. It is pungent. The, it's very um, eloquent. Yeah, it's actually, it's a kind mm. of food, it, it ranks right up there with your foie gras, your caviar. It's one of the most expensive foods actually. It pairs well with all kinds of different dishes and high-end 
restaurants and and uh, chefs just rave over it. They they really they love to cook with the truffle because it's got that real distinctive character that just threads its way through a meal. Well, I love it. Now, tell me, where can you purchase these type of cheeses? Or are there restaurants around here where you can get truffles? Because I know I've been to Europe before, and I know in France, like you said, they do have truffles. But what about California? Do they have places here where you can purchase this? Well, that's a great question, Leslie. And that's what's so exciting about working to establish a California truffle industry. Because right now, Truffles come imported through other regions that are growing them, but we don't have a commercial source of truffles that are California grown. And the thing about a truffle is the distinctive characteristics, that aroma and that flavor, a truffle has a very short shelf life. So within a matter of a week to 10 days, you've lost quite a bit of the character of the truffle. So in order to get a fresh truffle, it has to be imported. Oh. Now, you can find some fresh truffle on dishes, um, and this type of truffle we're referring to is a Paragord black truffle, oh. which actually grows in the winter time. So in order to eat fresh winter truffles, you're talking about a limited season, November through March, as well as it's coming right now from other parts of the world. Okay. So to really get that flavor and that flair and that character... That's why I'm so excited about bringing a California truffle industry forward on the Central Coast. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Well, my curiosity is, uh, why haven't people already done this? I mean, do you need a particular climate? Is Santa Maria a good climate? I've heard that Paso Robles is a good climate. I don't really know. But why haven't farmers already figured this one out here? That's a great question too, Leslie, and there's a variety of reasons for that. First of all, it originated in France, and, and the French highly revere the truffle. It's like their, their number one delicacy. And so, to be honest with you, they haven't been overly extending on the information in terms of how to grow. So they want to keep it their little secret. It has been their <laughs> secret for some, t- some time now. And just as we developed a a wine industry that rivaled the French, don't let them hear me say that, (laughs) but we're now on the the cusp of doing the same thing with truffles. And I think that's a big part of why truffles haven't really established themselves here as a a specialty crop, is because we've been focused for the last 30 years on really establishing that vineyard industry. Right, right. And so are you saying that you're trying to get the truffles here to the to the central coast? Yes, I'm working to connect farmers with basically trees. I have here a tree that is a, a oak tree. It's a holly oak. And it's been inoculated with the, the spores, the tuber melosporum fungus. Um, you can't see because it's in a pot. But actually within the pot, there's a root system that's establishing, again, that fungal activity. And under a microscope, you can detect that mycorrhization is what they call it, that that fungus is starting to develop and grow. Ultimately, as it does that, it will develop the fruiting bodies to continue the life cycle of the fungus. Okay. And those fruiting bodies are what turn out to be your truffle. Oh my goodness. Right, so I'm working with farmers in the area between Paso Robles and San Ynez Valley and encouraging them to look at truffles as another viable agricultural crop to grow. So here we have the seedling in the ground. We have laid the irrigation down, uh, which is basically micro-irrigation drip tubing. And the, the concept is to keep the roots moist. What we're doing here is we're really growing roots. We're not growing trees. The tree is the host to the fungus. Ultimately, we want that fungus to grow and, and continue to be very vibrant. And um, that's how the, the, the truffles will be propagated because they're actually the fruiting body of the fungus. The white powder on this particular little, little seedling is sulfur spray, which is used to protect the tree in its early stages from sunburn. So this will um, ultimately disappear as new shoots grow up into, through the, uh, the tree stalk. But we're doing that today to, again, protect them from the sun uh, so they don't get sunburned during these early stages of planting. 
So here we have a raised bed concept, which I think is a new concept to the world of truffles. And I'm very pleased to be working with Jay Rusky of Goodland Organics on this program. Jay has brought this concept of really working on growing the roots. Again, it's not about growing a tree in a perfect oak tree. It's about really dealing with what's happening underground. So the concept of this, this uh, berm is to create that bed of fungal activity, the microbiology underneath, to keep the roots happy and to be growing the roots. So the concept again is to keep the irrigation close to the surface within the root zone. We want to do short duration irrigation. It only needs to irrigate one to two feet in depth. Pull the trout. But all the activity happens within the root zone and very much to the surface. So by creating these berms, we're creating that environment. Most orchards I've been at have the trees planted flat on the ground. I really like this concept and I think we have something here to berm it up so we can really manage that root zone. In future years we will come back and we'll re-inoculate this edge of the berm to continue to get, bring more truffle fungus onto the roots, again to continue to grow that environment of fungal activity and fruiting bodies. Black truffle. We expect that within the next four to six years, we'll be actually pulling black truffle out of the ground. And to the landowner, that's great success and great profits at $1,000 a pound and the potential of yielding 550 to um, 50 pounds per acre, that's $50,000 an acre. Here we have two. That's going to be a great cash flow to our farmers. And let me mention to you, harvest happens in the winter time, which makes this again a very appealing crop for California farmers from a couple standpoints. First of all, the labor involved is very low. As well, it's during the winter time when you don't have this extreme labor shortages you might during the summer and fall harvest months. Well, ex can you go a little bit more into detail how they are harvested? Um, well, let me talk a little bit before we get that in terms of the planting and the, the life cycle of the tree. Again, it takes several years for the fungus, the tuber mellisporum, to develop those fruiting bodies, which in turn create your truffles. So they need to be planted, and as you say, there are certain climatic conditions, which we do have here. We have the uh, Mediterranean climate, why we do so well with so many crops. Uh, we also, the techniques are very similar to a vineyard management, where you're going to do special pruning and different activities to care and nurture the tree during the initial stages, while again, that fungal activity is churning underground <clears throat> and creating the fruiting bodies. Once you have that aroma, what is characteristic, again, about the truffle is the aroma. And so in order to harvest them, a lot of people think they're harvested with pigs. And pigs have historically been what's been used to harvest because <clears throat> they can pull out the, the scent. But the problem with pigs is they like to eat them. <laughs> oh, that, I was wondering about that. Exactly. Yeah. So how do you handle that issue? Right. So that's been handled now through trained dogs. Oh, dogs. Yeah. And, and there's actually a special breed that's come out of Italy. And they have been bred specifically to hunt and detect truffles. And you can really train any dog to uh, hunt truffles, but you want one that's got a good olfactory uh, you know, sense to it so it can really sniff out um, the truffle. But that's how it's, it's done by the aroma. And the dog will sniff it, and then a truffle handler will come behind the dog and stake that location. And then once the dog has moved on, someone can come behind it and dig the truffle up. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, I guess there's a lot of different things you can actually do with the truffles. I mean, you brought the cheese here, but I've seen it actually in, I think, different types of oils and vinegars, and I've, it seems like you have a, a lotion here with the truffle, but tell us some of the uses we could use with these truffles. Well, again, truffles are like that culinary extra uh, sense of luxury, um, like a caviar would be on a meal. It's that extra topping. Um, that you use to enhance 
food and, and the flavors. Um, it brings out that characteristic. Now, what's interesting, you bring up oils and different things that you can find it in. Mm-hmm. And I brought here with you to here today for you a cheese that does have chunks of truffles in it. You can see that in the cheese. And this was purchased at Trader Joe's. And um, cheeses or oils or eggs even. Eggs. Or butter. Anything really? um, like that, an oily substance, can really take on the flavor and character of the truffle. And that's how you extend the life of the truffle aroma and character. Now, you mentioned oils, and I have here a salt. Um, some of these actually are made with synthetic products. So if you buy an oil um, that says it's a truffle flavor, or if you sometimes you'll see popcorn on a, a menu uh, or fries, truffle fries, that's usually made with an oil that's actually a synthetic product to bring out that aroma and character. Um, I had to bring this along because um, it just goes to show that truffles are making their mark. This is a product I bought through Weight Watchers, which is a salt that's being sold again as a food enhancer to really enhance the character and flavor of your food. Oh. Uh, it's, so it's like a salt. That's a truffle salt. Is that exactly? Oh, now again, it's the truffle you're getting in that is not real truffle. I think I purchased that for maybe twelve dollars. If it really had truffle in it, it could be more like twenty-five or thirty dollars. Oh, because the truffle, and that's what's exciting too. It's a very economically profitable crop to grow. It can yield $1,000 a pound, and you can get 15, 20, 25 pounds per acre, which really makes it an attractive commodity for farmers to get involved in. Oh, my goodness. Wonderful. And now I'm looking here, too. Is this a lotion for your face made out of truffle, or tell us about this? Yeah, this I I got a kick out of because I was walking down solving with a best friend of mine, and I was handed this packet, which is truffles infused eye cream it's also it's the gold product so again i wouldn't bet that there's real truffle in this but it's certainly that sense of you're putting gold and you're putting luxury on your face i'm sure it has a scent would you like to open it and see i would like get some I, truffle like I, I love the cheese i'm sure i'd love that too i haven't opened it myself and i'm kind of interested mm. This cheese is just to die for. Mm. Let's see what we have. Mm. Would you like to put some on your eyes? Maybe it will be more beautiful, lose 10 years in seconds. It has, it, it, I was wondering what, what would truffle smell like? It smells delightful. Very nice. Oh, you are putting it on. Yes, <laughs> oh, this does have a very nice aroma. It does. It's really, it's, it has a really nice texture to it. Uh, again, I don't know if it's really much truffle. It's, I think, used more as a marketing piece here in, in this case. But it just goes to show that truffles mm. have a long way to go in reaching our market, being a part of our culture and our, our just sense of well-being and, and health and, and luxury here on the Central Coast. Exactly. So I'm curious, too, about if, let's just say we went to a restaurant that had truffles. Would that be served in, like, a soup? Do they put it in salads? Do they mix it with their cheeses? Or how would a restaurant present the truffles? Well, most of the time, if you're in a restaurant that's serving fresh truffles, and, again, I have a couple pictures. Um, There's some truffles on this book here. Yeah, this is called Taming the Truffle, and it's got a lot of great information about growing truffles. But they're basically, just like a chocolate truffle, they're a round, dark ball. Um, they're hard, so I, I, they are a mushroom, but they're quite a bit harder, more firm than a mushroom. And so what you do is you take a slicer, which I have here, and you can actually slice the, mush, the, the truffle right onto the top of uh, an item, a food item. I've oh. had, I actually went to the Napa Truffle Festival in January and oh, we had fabulous nice. food and uh, five star Michelin chefs prepared for us. And they would just shave it right over the food or they chop it in little slivers. Um, th- I had one dish where they did actually pour a soup over the um, centerpiece, which was very delightful. There's all kinds of ways, again, to make it a meal 
that would normally be an everyday meal into something just elegant and fabulous. So basically you can put truffles, it sounds like just about in any anything. If you have a steak, you've got soup, you've got salad, whatever, you've got bread, you could just put it on the bread with the butter well, or? I'm gonna, hold, I'm gonna slow you down there a little bit, Leslie, because it's not quite that simple. First of all, they're a high-end product. So for one of these little round truffles, about this big is what we purchased. It was $100. So I'm picturing it the size of a walnut. Yeah, is exactly. That right? okay. That's a, a great description. And that was $100. So you don't want to oh. be sprinkling it all over everything. And there are certain foods that it doesn't go well with. Very acidic foods like okay. spaghetti, sauces, or tomatoes. I wouldn't think you'd want to sprinkle your truffles on a salad. I don't think you'd really get much out of it. Okay. It's when you pair it with those butters. Oh, the and buttery a things. Dollop of truffle butter on top of a steak. Oh, that would be to die for. Mm. Um, butter on bread, like you said, that truffle butter would be fabulous. Oh, truffle butter. Just on oh. pasta, again, with that butter. You really want to enjoy the luxury of that truffle. And so you really want to choose your, your selection wisely in terms of what you serve it on. And that's why, again, going to a restaurant and seeing it on the menu and letting the chef be the creator of how to use that truffle is very exciting. Mm -hmm. I did see it in one restaurant, actually, in Los Olivos. I think it was called the Los Olivos Cafe, and they do have a truffle soup there that was, whoo, it was really, really amazing. Absolutely. So, uh, yes, we are. It's exciting. In Los Alamos, we have some restaurants, and as you say, in San Ynez, and, and it's, it's out there. Um, you can go and find truffles on the menu. Again, if you want that fresh uh, actually natural truffle that's been imported, it's going to be during the winter time. Mm -hmm. Again, in France and truffle con consumption at that level is really focused around the holidays. Okay. And so <laughs> it's the, the centerpiece of a holiday meal. It's also very popular during the Valentine's season. Oh. And I had uh, with my husband some truffle this last Valentine's at a local restaurant. But something else about truffle that's kind of neat to know is it's actually an aphrodisiac. Oh, so that's why seriously. it goes so well uh, in the Valentine and the season of love. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I know they say oysters are so. Now we could add this to the list. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, are they considered nutritional? Are there many? Do you know if there's like many vitamins or? I, I'm thinking because it's grown naturally. There's probably all kinds of vitamins in there. I, I would imagine so, but I haven't gotten into that realm of um, the, the truffle. Again, um, you really, you want to use the product sparingly because mm -hmm. of its expense. So I don't know that you're getting a great nutritional value. Certainly wouldn't be harmful, just like mushrooms are very good for you. Right. Um, it is a mushroom uh, in the mushroom family. Um, but yeah, in terms of, I guess, other aspects of its, um, the nature of it is, it's sustainable in terms of farming. Sustainable, can you explain what you mean by, does, is that organic or what do you mean by sustainable? Yeah, that's a great question. And <clears throat> it's not purely organic and there's all kinds of definitions and qualifiers to make a product organic, but it is a sustainable by nature product. And that means that it basically requires low input. It doesn't need pesticides and, and herbicides because basically it's creating its own microbiology in the root structure. Okay. So it's competing against weeds and different things that could come in and counteract and cause problems and challenges in, mm -hmm. in the field. Um, actually, one of the indicators that you have good mycorrhization underground is what's called a brulee, another fabulous word. And we think of cream brulees. Of course, it came from the France, from France, but it actually creates a burning of all the other weeds and growth around um, the, the, uh, um, the stalk of the tree. So you know that you've got good growth underground. Oh, there's a lot to know about these truffles, they and I'm, sure I'm feeling that the farmers here would benefit by growing these truffles. I, I am knocking on doors and talking with farmers, and I've got a lot of interest. Oh. I have had a couple of farmers um, get involved and plant some trees. I've got about 800 trees that have been planted here on the Central Coast in Santa Maria. Oh, in Santa yeah, Maria. That's yeah. awesome. And I'm talking about um, getting a few more thousand in the ground within the next six months, um, probably early spring, 
Uh, we've got about 5,000 trees we're looking to get in the ground that, um, such as this that are ready to go and ready to start growing some fungus and, and truffles here on the Central Coast. Um, there's actually about 22,000 trees on the western um, uh, coastal coastline between Canada and San Diego at this oh, point. Really? So people are catching on. They are catching on, and it's just a matter of time when we really start seeing more truffles on the menu. That's awesome. Well, as I mentioned earlier, Lisa is a land use manager, planner, and if you like more information, it's on the screen. If you have any questions, you're interested in growing truffles, whatever, just look on your screen, and we have Lisa's information there. So is there anything else you'd like to tell our viewers before we close today well i'm going to tell you one little anecdote about truffles they they characterize uh the fungus the tuber millisporum and the growth of truffles like a teenage boy they like to eat a lot and have sex oh <laughs> is that right yeah so, so that's we make the soil everything is about growing those roots growing that system to keep that teenage boy happy <laughs> Oh, I'm in. All right, Lisa. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. And it's been my pleasure, Leslie. Thank, Thank you. you so well, much. good luck with your truffles. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the Leslie Show today. I hope you enjoyed it. And go out there and try some truffles. Next week, we're going to have a lot of fun. We are going to be talking about drones. Did you know that the day is coming that a drone may just deliver your mail to your home? Anyway, I hope you watch our show next week and go out and get some truffles and don't let anyone ever take your mojo. Woo! Have a wonderful week. Bye now.